All right, we gotta get the hell out of here. Jeez, that should have been easier to open. Yes, damn thing's gonna chase us around. If I turn right, I die. Turn left. Whoops. Ran into the wall there. You know, this is actually probably the closest to like a Resident Evil style camera that we have in this game. Because it's placed at very cinematic angles. As opposed to just the sort of wide shots that a majority of the, this game take place at. Like this. This is how most of the scenes take place. I guess because there isn't going to be any combat, and it's intended to mean they want to you know, flex the muscles of I don't know, placing the camera around a bit. Yes, there's a knob that sets the boiler pressure up high enough to explode the whole fucking ship. Time to get the hell out of here. Wonder if there's anything else to see down here. Probably not. Right of the game, there's nothing to pick up. Yes, that hatch on the floor. Or there also wouldn't be hallways that go nowhere. <laughs> Motherfucker's flying now. Run, girl, run, damn it.
damn kid's still wearing a tracksuit. Yeah, why the hell is Aya the only one that's dressed up here?
That was the end of Parasite Eve. Now, it was one of two endings that exist for this game. Unfortunately, I don't think either of them are very good, and they don't really set the storyline up properly for its sequel. There was this one, which I guess is open a little bit to interpretation, because you're not really ex told exactly what happened there, but it's, I guess it's a pretty reasonable expectation, or pretty reasonable belief that what happened was that the mitochondria in Aya's body mutated, eventually did mutate in the same way that Eve's did. And it took control of her, and then took control of everybody in the crowd. And, well, that doesn't really set itself up for the sequel, because in the sequel, none of that shit happened. There's another ending, which I may, but probably won't, bother going and showing, involves starting the game over again, but then getting to the Chrysler building. And you have this long dungeon crawl, getting through it, then you get to the end, then you have a boss fight. And then there's some revelation that while Eve was out and about doing her thing, this is supposed to be the true ending, by the way, while Eve was going around doing her thing, Maya was still alive in some form in the Chrysler building, doing her own thing as a sort of backup plan in case Eve and the ultimate being had failed. Well, Aya goes and fights her, defeats her, and then some weird crap happens where Maya goes and, like, merges, in a sense, with Aya, but in the process, Aya loses her mitochondria powers and just turns into a normal human being. Well, this music's kind of creepy, isn't it? Well, it, um... I don't really care for that ending. For one thing, it seems a little... seems a little thrown together. There isn't a big, fantastic, like, uh, cutscene or anything like that. It's just Aya standing in a room, having a conversation with herself. With the text on the screen, there's no voice acting, of course, or anything like that. And it seems kind of like, well, that was underwhelming. And that doesn't really fit with the sequel either, because the sequel comes around, and um, Aya is still super-powered and all that kind of crap, so that ending doesn't fit either. My guess is that the developers or the scenario writers, writers, whatever the hell you want to call them, didn't intend to ever make a sequel to this. This was supposed to be just a one-off thing, but, you know, Squaresoft is a company, or was a company, and was looking for any kind of new series it could pick up and continue on, because if it made enough money, hell, why not make a second one? Parasite 82 was a very different game, though. It was more Resident Evil-y in the way that it played, and its story was a little bit more nonsensical. I may or may not do a, uh, I haven't decided yet, do a playthrough of that. I'll put it on the list, see if I ever get to it. This game, though, is definitely something unique. It shows the kind of balls that developers had back in the mid-90s. And PlayStation came around and had this whole different technology. And you could do the 3D, and you had the CDs, which not only offered a significantly larger storage, um, storage medium for the developers, but it was also a hell of a lot cheaper to, to actually manufacture the games send to stores. So you saw a lot of games coming out that were experimental, strange, kinds of things that you wouldn't have seen on the N64 or on the previous generation consoles that relied on cartridges because, well, there wasn't as much of an investment so you could afford to throw weird things against the wall and see what stuck. So you have this RPG here. And this, is, I mean, it has a bit of a unique battle system for its day. It kind of resembles Final Fantasy XII, I think. Unique for its time, though. And a bit of a unique setting, too, especially for a Japanese-developed game to take place in the United States in New York City. Definitely unusual. And also, well, uh, I guess... Now, it's a little hard for me to get a perspective on this, but I feel like there probably weren't that many sole female protagonists in 
games. I mean, there were lots of female uh, protagonists in RPGs because, you know, you had a whole party. You're going to have Lock and Terra and, and all that kind of stuff. But Aya was basically alone the entire game. She was running around by herself, and that was probably unusual of the day. Hmm, a lot of names. I wonder how many people actually worked on this and what they did. How long did development for this take? Speaking of Aya, I feel like Aya was probably... I it, it, Okay, it, it had been a long time since I played this game. It was probably around the year 2000 when I played this game. This came out in... What was it, 1997? I don't think I played it until... 19, I, I think I had gotten it as a Christmas gift in 1999 and then played it up until 2000 and then I haven't touched it since so that's probably why I wasn't really faking as much my lack of knowledge of how to get through this game as I was simply not remembering but I had forgotten a few things and one of the things I had forgotten was that I actually had a personality she had a sense of humor she wasn't um, I had only remembered her as being a typical RPG protagonist from the earlier days. Like, didn't really have much of a personality, was more of a blank slate, so that way the character wouldn't say or do anything that would sort of break the immersion of you sort of putting yourself in the perspective of the character, or the character being an avatar for you. That's definitely an old-school concept. You don't see it as much anymore, except for in, like, um, like the Elder Scrolls games, which is definitely the case in that. But she actually had a personality, and it was... Uh, it just took me by surprise, because I didn't remember any of that. I definitely remembered that... that the other characters in the game had personalities because they had to interact with Aya and all that. It's kind of a shame how they let this series fall apart because especially in the more recent years how there's just been this big push towards what they the so-called um, strong female characters that they want to push for that kind of thing. Aya was definitely a good example of that back in the 90s. She wasn't uh, she wasn't ridiculously overpowered and humor and all that kind of stuff. She didn't take shit from anybody. But they kind of fucked it up, didn't they? When, I don't know, the, the second game wasn't too bad. But they made this, they, they let the series die. They made one more game for the PS1. Parasite Eve 2. And then the series went in the sort of rest mode for a long time. And it wasn't for like another ten years or so that we saw a Parasite Eve-ish game come out for the PSP. And, wow, that, that thing was just a hot mess. I didn't play a lot of it, but it seems kind of cringy and terrible. It's like they didn't understand what it was that they were dealing with. They were just trying to create some action game, and the character of Aya was overly, overtly sexualized, and it was kind of like, like okay, tone it down a bit. I'm getting a lot of points here. I guess this is what you carry over into the, the new game save, you know. That's a lot of points. But then, that game probably bombed. I don't imagine that sold very well. So, Parasite Eve sort of faded away and now here we are and it's 2019 when I'm recording this and there hasn't been a Parasite Eve game since and uh, you know what there probably won't be and you know what maybe there shouldn't be I definitely don't want to see a reboot I feel like they'll fuck up a reboot and a sequel comes out I don't think they know I don't think they have the right people in place I don't think they can make another Parasite Eve right now so Perhaps we should just let this sleeping dog lie. But anyway, that was Parasite Eve. It's This is probably the final episode. I, I don't know. 
if it hits me to go and do the go do the Chrysler building stuff, I might do that, but probably not. So anyway, it's me signing off. Um, I got a bunch of other games on this YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw here for some reason, I got a bunch of other ones. Feel free to have a look at those. But for now, signing off.